How do you know if you can handle being an entrepreneur? Are you ready to work 100 hours a week, hours at a time without distraction for years on end, giving up a social life, partying, banging chicks, having fun for years just for it not to work? Fuck, that doesn't sound like fun, does it? Well, that's the reality. That's why most men and women are not successful entrepreneurs. It's only the small percentage of people. It is very difficult to do. It is glorified by online influencers. Everybody wants to do it. And it's gotten to a point where now people that have a nine to five or normal job are absolutely shit on by everybody, which is ironic because I'm one of those people. I'm always like, dude, you don't want to do a nine to five. You want to get this and that. But the reality is the world does need nine to fivers. It needs people. By the end of this video, you're going to know if you have what it takes to be an entrepreneur. Not if you want to be an entrepreneur, but if you actually are able to, at least you can be honest with yourself because the worst is people that say they want to be an entrepreneur. They talk about being an entrepreneur. They consume content about how to be an entrepreneur, but they never end up being an entrepreneur because they just can't do it. And they waste years and a lot of stress because guys, it's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of hard work and it destroys people's mental health. So this video is going to serve as kind of a roadmap on whether or not it's for you. And I will also give recommendations at the end of the video for those of you that do not have what it takes to be an entrepreneur right now anyways. So one of the most underrated content creators right now is Alex Farmozzi, and he has some pretty priceless business advice. He had a video about the traits of a successful entrepreneur, and after listening to it, I was like, damn, this guy nailed it. So I'm gonna reiterate what he said. There are essentially three things that all high-functioning entrepreneurs have in common, both from his experience as well as my experience, and also from all the books and people that I've listened to over the years that give advice on entrepreneurship. The first quality is going to be insecurity, a chip on your shoulder. That sounds kind of counterintuitive, right? When you think entrepreneurs, successful people, influencers, models, actors, YouTubers, whatever, you probably think, wow, this person's so confident. They're smiling all the time. They're so happy. They've always just been great. They were born this way. But the dark secret is what you don't see is these guys crying, puking into a basket, doing a hundred different takes, getting bullied when they're kids. Like all these people essentially have a huge chip on their shoulder driven by insecurity. They are motivated to prove the haters wrong. They are motivated to show all the people that bullied them in middle school and high school how much better they are now, how they didn't let it get to them. They are trying so hard to please their parents because their parents were so hard on them. If you get under 100% on your test, even if it's 99, you're a loser and you get hit. And whatever your origin story is, it comes from some kind of insecurity. Hormozy, his example was his father was a super hardworking guy. I believe he was a doctor and he earned a lot of money. And he always told Alex, you're never going to make more money than me. I'm always going to earn more than you. And it was like this thing where you're never on my level. And until he made an ungodly amount of money, several million dollars, his dad didn't respect him. But what ended up happening is because of that pain and pressure his father put on him, it led him to making millions of dollars. So most influencers, they have a similar thing. It's kids at school make fun of them because they're weird or they're different. You know, the artist type, people that like me, they have a uh, form of high functioning autism. They were artistic kids. They were different. They had a weird sense of humor or interests. They liked drawing. They were kind of socially weird. There's all these little things that happen to us, but essentially what it boils down to is you're seen as different. And when you're different, people don't want to give you as much attention. They see you as like an outsider, I suppose. And that drives people to being bullied and it sends them down a dark rabbit hole. And I believe that the most talented people in the world, the most successful people, entrepreneurs, actors, influencers, etc., the ones that didn't come from wealthy families, the ones that came from normal backgrounds, their success is the direct result of them being weird and left out as a kid. Some kind of insecurity, some kind of competitiveness. I have this one friend and he used to be skinny and he got bullied in middle school. And then he spent a year exercising, eating, gained 20, 30 pounds of muscle, started training wrestling. And then he ran into the guy that bullied him and just snapped on him. And now to this day, he's in good shape. He's fit. And that all came from insecurity. So that's the first thing, okay? The second quality of an entrepreneur is narcissism. Narcissism is a very triggering word. Nobody really likes to be called it. But what it boils down to is you think you're always right. You're the best. And everybody else is wrong. And everything else is their problem. It's like being an asshole, I suppose. But it's almost to a delusional level. It's like you genuinely think that everybody else is the problem 
not you. And the entrepreneurial version of narcissist would be like, I'm the smartest person here. I should be in charge because I am correct. I know more than you. But it's not in a way of like, hey, I'm better than you. It's more of a, I'm the leader here. I'm the one that should be in charge. I'm going to take initiative. I'm going to be assertive. I'm going to say what I feel and I'm not going to wait for others. I'm going to be the captain, the leader. And to do that kind of thing, you must inherently believe that you are better than other people. And if you believe that you're better than other people, you believe that they are in a way inferior to you. Even if it's a little bit, you are superior to them. That is why you should be the leader. And you see this in all kinds of industries, sports, the classroom, but most importantly in entrepreneurship, because what you're saying is like, hey, I'm the person to solve this problem for everybody. I'm the person to run this company better than anybody else. I'm the person that is going to be my own boss versus working under somebody else because I think I'm better than them. And it's a good thing. People need to stop hiding from certain narcissistic qualities because they're afraid of being judged because that's what makes you successful. The third quality is impulse control. This one was very fascinating and it makes sense, but the terminology is a lot more easier to understand because when people say hard work, it's almost so commonly said that people don't even understand what it works anymore. And our idea of hard work is way less than what our grandparents was, okay? Their idea of normal work is our idea of hard work. To us, working 10 hours a day, oh my God. If you go on Reddit or the internet, there's entire subreddits of people complaining about how hard their shift at Starbucks was. Well, how about you go into the skilled trades? Why don't you get a job that actually pays money? Why are you going to some easy job like that? Like again, skilled trades no requirement besides lifting something 50 pounds or heavier and you get paid more than anywhere else for little minimum skill background okay it's so easy to make a living wage you just don't want to do hard work anyways side tangent there impulse control is your ability to control your inclination to pursue dopamine and other related things for example if you're always out there trying to bang chicks then you're not getting any work done if you're always out there reaching for the candy and the chocolate you're going to be unhealthy if you are easily influenced by friends, peer pressure, or watching TV or movies, playing video games, these are all examples of poor impulse control. An example of impulse control is you being able to complete all your work tasks despite having your phone next to you, your computer, internet, a bowl of chocolate, candy. You still are able to stay focused and complete the task. And then afterwards, you can indulge in whatever you want. But impulse control is resisting the temptations that you have as a human and getting work done. Work that's often boring, mundane, miserable, and challenging. So if you have those three qualities put together, then you have what it takes to be a successful entrepreneur. Up next, we have handling neuroticism. This one is interesting and it's something I really resonate with because people that have all of the aforementioned qualities tend to be very neurotic. They tend to be a bit crazy. We've all heard the stories of the Steve Jobs, the Adam Newmans of the world, the guys that are really weird they're ruthless, they're savages. Like Steve Jobs was a lunatic screaming and yelling at people. I had a friend that worked for Elon Musk for a couple months and he said that one day Elon Musk walked by a new employee and they were on their phone and he fired them on the spot because they were on their phone. So there's all these like weird little things that most people will be like, oh my God, like that's, you can't do that, right? But if you're a genius or you're a rich guy or a CEO or an entrepreneur, you can get away with these things because you have different rules. What ends up happening, though, is you have all these people that just have something weird about them, right? It is very weird, borderline autistic for somebody to spend 19 hours straight working on something or kids in middle school and high school that we all remember were in the computer lab building programs or customizing game servers or setting up LAN parties. These are all things that are very difficult and challenging to do and require lots of focus. But the people that have these qualities, since they're, again, likely to be on a certain spectrum they also tend to have mood disorders depression anxiety they overthink situations when you are an entrepreneur you have to be overthinking because you're able to see things that others don't an average healthy non-overthinker will not see all the opportunities that you do but they also won't see all the insecurities so it's like a double-edged sword but again if you overthink and you tend to be very neurotic this is one of the reasons that people become entrepreneurs because they have a voice inside their head that never shuts up. So they may as well put it to work. Next is going to be self-awareness. You need to be self-aware about your business, whether it's working, whether it's not. For example, 
Let's say you want to be a musician, but you're an awful singer. You just can't hit the right notes. When people listen to you, it makes them want to pull their ears out. You're like, okay, you know what? Maybe it's not for me. If you go into mixed martial arts and you're slow, you get hit all the time, you get taken down easy, and you get tired within two minutes, unless you really, really work on it, then you're going to be unsuccessful. You're going to get just beat up consistently, right? So it's very important for people to be self-aware with their business idea and not get distracted by their own desires and passions. For example, let's say your passion is painting, but you suck at painting. Nobody's buying your painting. Your bills are stacking up. You have responsibilities. Your body's falling apart. You can't pay your bills. You're starting to lose friends. On one end, you could be like, well, you know what? Just believe in yourself and uh, you'll make it. Sure, maybe after 10, 15, 20, 30 years, or you could be self-aware and be like, you know what? As much as I love this painting thing, there just isn't a market for it. And this is a whole other video I'm going to do. But most people, when they think of entrepreneurship, they think, I want to do what I want as a business versus I want to solve a problem that nobody else is willing to or knows how to solve as a business. And then you can do what you want. Go into the skilled trades, start your own contracting company. And then by 30, you're going to have a lot of money coming in. You have another crew that manages most of your day-to-day -day operations. You have a house. You now have freed up time where you only have to work a couple days a week, potentially. Now you can do your painting for fun and you can invest money into getting these paintings seen by others and selling them. And then, hey, who knows? Maybe you start actually generating money from doing these paintings and you don't have to do your construction company anymore. But most people don't have the luxury to attempt doing that because they don't have the money in the first place. So that is a quality of entrepreneurs, self-awareness if their business is not working. Another quality of entrepreneurs is long-term mindset, patience. Most businesses take five to 10 years. There's a big misconception that most entrepreneurs are in their 20s because every time you have a one in a million genius startup tech guy like a Twitter or a Snapchat or a Facebook that's like 20 years old, it's insane. It's like the coolest thing ever. Guy that's 20 doesn't really know anything besides this one niche thing that he's turned into a business and he's got millions, billions of dollars in valuation. We look at that and we're like, oh my God, that could be me. So that's why as a society, people look at young people with an idea and they're just like, yep, this guy gets it. And it's funny because the average age of most entrepreneurs, successful ones, is like 42 or 43. It's usually guys that have a very high end skill set, such as coding, programming, marketing, economics, some kind of nice university degree, despite what they tell you about dropouts. And they come from a family that's usually middle class or higher middle class, because that way when they were kids, they had like tutoring private teachers. They had really good connections they met. So it was easy for them to get into better schools, get funding, get access to other employees. They just have more access to money, et cetera, et cetera. But in addition to that, they're usually high IQ people and they might be totally socially awkward and total recluses that are very bad at talking to other people. But man, can they code? Man, are they genius at engineering or something like that, that again, nobody else wants to do. And maybe they go into an industry about their passion, like Adam Newman with WeWork. Other times though, they just go into like, hey, well, there's a big opening in the market here for AI or medical care or transportation. Do you think that the guys that started Uber were like, I love cars. I love driving cars. My whole family drove cars. No, they're probably like, hmm. There's a way that this could be more convenient. And that is what makes a successful entrepreneur waiting years. Now I'm going to end this video with a motivational story for you guys about what true entrepreneurship looks like. There's a guy named Soichiro Honda. This is the guy behind Honda, the vehicles, which is now a multi-billion dollar company. Basically, he always wanted to have his own kind of company. He was into bikes. He was into engines and engineering. I got some notes here I'm going to read to you. He created a part of a vehicle, a piston ring, and he went and he presented it to Toyota. Toyota looked at him and they're like, bro, this is not good. It does not meet our standards of engineering. So he spent all this time in school as a kid working on this design, goes to a company like in the movies, like, hey, here you go. This is my big shot. And they're like, dog shit. Get the fuck out of here, you little fuck. Company rejected him. So he's like, all right, well, he didn't lose hope. Went back to school, a technical school, so he could improve his engineering jobs. Finally, after another two years of working on his piston ring, he went back to the company and he's like, all right, boys, here we go. Better design. And they're like, cool, here's a contract. Let's do it. Problem was, guys, this was in the 1940s in Japan and Japan was getting ready for a world war with the United States. So it's like, 
Imagine that. You come back. Now you have this piston ring figured out. Just spent a bunch of time in school. You got it. You go to them. They're like, we want this. Bad timing though, bro. There's a world war. Fuck. Holy shit. So because of the war, he wasn't able to source the materials to make a factory. So again, he got screwed. Anyways, despite this, after a bunch of effort and work, he did manage to construct a factory. But then the factory got bombed twice during the war. And it's crazy that this guy even survived, considering that during World War II, all these bombs were dropped on Japan. After all of that shit he went through, got bombed twice. Can you guys imagine that? Having a business that you fought for years and then fucking bombs got dropped on it? Like, what the fuck? I don't think insurance was a thing back then either. So it's like, cool. Well, I guess make a new factory, bro. Sorry, bro. Just be confident, bro. So then this guy builds the factory again, despite all this. And now the war is finally coming to an end. It's 1945. Thank fuck. And boom, there's a fucking earthquake, guys. There's a earthquake in Japan destroys his factory what the fuck first he gets rejected then he goes to school gets the deal can't start the factory because of war finds a way to start a factory anyways it gets bombed twice survives the war rebuilds it reconstructs it and then there's a fucking earthquake fuck me dude what the fuck so he was totally out of business and all he had was his manufacturing process so instead of doing it himself he had to sell it to toyota can you imagine that guys getting cucked it's like foreclosure on your business, basically. You have to give your product to somebody else. Like, that's tough, boys. That's tough on the ego. After the war, there was a massive fuel shortage in Japan, which made transportation inaccessible, and it made it very hard for people to do anything. So he came up with an idea. He's like, hmm, okay, well, what if I put a small motor on a bicycle? That way, it's not a whole-ass car, and it's affordable, it doesn't take up much space, and it's independent, individualized. It's much more affordable and it just works. It's clutch. So he put a small motor on a bicycle and he invented it and he attracted a bunch of people. This part's nuts though, guys. I got to read this part. He didn't have any money to construct all these scooter bikes or whatever the fuck. He didn't have enough. So what he did was he wrote 18,000 letters and mailed them to various dealers, financers, companies, businesses, manufacturers, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. And 3,000 of them replied to him and they're like, yo, we'll help you out. Then he got enough money, started making these cars, and within a decade, these cars were being sold in America. His motorcycles were winning international races and the guy was bawling, okay? This took him like 20, 30 fucking years. Literally got bombed. Literally had an earthquake. Literally had to start and restart multiple times, okay? And this was back in the day too. I feel like nowadays people wouldn't even be able to make it that far. They'd be too distracted with like TikTok or social media or video games. So this was like pretty iconic. But again, that is the kind of thing that's required. One of the greatest books of all time on small business, escaping your nine to five, et cetera, et cetera, was written by Tim Ferriss. It's called The 4-Hour Workweek. He was turned down by like 26 publishers before it actually got made. Can you imagine that, guys? Writing an awesome book and then sending it to 25 different publishers and all of them just being like, yo, dude, how about you suck my dick? Fuck you and your stupid ass book. Can you take that? Can you deal with that for years at a time? Probably not. One last story, guys. Sir James Dyson. This is the guy with the vacuum cleaner, the Dyson vacuum cleaner. Apparently, it took this dude 15 years and all of his savings to make a decent vacuum cleaner. It took him, I think, what? 5,126 prototypes? Holy shit. Ridiculous. So those are the qualities of entrepreneurship. For those of you guys here that do have some experience in entrepreneurship, whether you have a multi-million dollar company or you've sold lemonade before, I'm curious what you guys have to say about entrepreneurship. What qualities do you possess or the entrepreneurs that you know possess that makes them successful? If we all know a guy that has some kind of business and he's just batshit crazy, but he's super successful. We also know those guys that couldn't even talk to a person in real life, but he could code a whole website, right? So I'm curious about your guys' experience with entrepreneurship, people that you know, people that you've heard of locally. And I want you guys to leave those comments in the section below. If you're an entrepreneur or you're a young guy that's looking to get on the self-improvement kick, you want to make money, you want to attract more women into your life, you want to make friends, et cetera, et cetera, join our Discord server. We have a whole group for all you guys out there that are on the same journey. Your current Discord server is probably just you and your high school buddies playing video games, which is fun. But if you want to relocate in the world, if you want to travel, if you want to start a business, you want to make money, get in shape, you're going to find people that also want to do that in our Discord server. So make sure you join it. 
And if you're watching this video and you're a fan of my page, you're already in the Discord server, share this with your friends, send this to them, tag them and be like, yo, dude, there's this video on entrepreneurship you should watch because the more of your friends that you can get to watch these kind of videos and get on the same page as you, the more likely they will also be able to be successful entrepreneurs or set up a lifestyle. So that way, instead of you being alone, when you go and travel the world and meet people and bang chicks, you can do it with your friends. Imagine that. Imagine if you get all your friends to do what you're doing right now. And then all of you guys keep each other accountable. Easy. You're going to be a fucking beast. Okay. And I want that for all of you. So share this video with your friends. And the next video to watch after this is going to appear on the screen. So go watch that and I will see you in there. Peace.